But You've let me ask you something. If I have 1,000 Kenya shillings here and mm. 1,000 Ugandan shillings, which one has more value? No, that's exactly, that's what I'm trying to explain. That's what? Yeah, that's what that's I'm trying, I'm so trying to explain. So, answer for me that one. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to explain to you. This is 1,000 Uganda shillings. shillings. This is 1,000 Kenya shillings. Which one has more value? No, you cannot equate <laughs> ma- you cannot equate money like that. That's why I'm also trying to help Francis. Yeah, I think Francis has the same thought as you. Y- exactly, and which is wrong. Actually, it's not also only the Kenyan currency. In Africa, there are three currencies that are not doing well. Mm-hmm. The Kenyan currency, mm-hmm. the I think the Angolan one, and the Niger, the Nigerian, the Naira. People sti- seated at the helm of their economy, from the presidency uh, to the ministries. <coughs> I'm sure those guys, there's something they are not doing right. Because we know in Kenya, Kenyans are these most well-educated people whom you would be expecting to be doing things right. I'm one person who follows what transpires in Kenya a lot. Mm-hmm. I saw this case where a Rwandan businessman was being conned by the Kenyan person an investor an investor i also saw previous uh, recently that they wanted to i think do some renovation on the state house on their state house and the money which i saw yeah. eh? exaggerated. Yes. it is exaggerated doing business in kenya mm-hmm. is costly to the lower people to the uh, normal the citizens yeah, the normal citizens. Forget about the middle class and the upper class. Mm. The normal citizens are our people in the villages, farmers, the Kenyan government. Mm-hmm. Make these farmers comfortable by lowering all the costs. Let the costs be the same as the costs in Uganda. That will be the easiest way out. And you know it's possible. Just use uh, remove those VAT issues you are talking about. So now Kenya is also trying to behave the same way. Like the same way Americans want to bully everyone all, all over the world because they are a superpower. Let me also tell these Kenyans, mm-hmm. brothers and sisters of ours, mm. um, I actually might be more Kenyan than you people. Mm. I have families there, I'm always there. I know what is happening in Uganda and Kenya because I have interest in Kenya. On the Kenyan side, you have good PR, even your citizens talk about good in Kenya, but what is on ground is not really what you are talking about. Mm. Eh? Me, I've uh, had some few projects I've done in Kenya, especially in the villages. People are not doing well. And it's because the government doesn't want to go down on the ground and see exactly what is happening. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Price. And uh, today we're going to be talking about the Kenya. Because I made a video last time saying that I don't know how Kenyan shilling declined and it is like known by a person like me who doesn't even follow current affairs so today i promise you that i'm going to bring for you a guest who will be explaining to me and you how how the kenyan shilling reached here because you know it used to be like a very strong currency i remember i used to be, my used to be telling me that kenyan money has value but as we talk now i don't know whether i'm right or not but today I have brought for you a guest. He's going to be telling us why, as we speak today, eh? Uganda shilling is stronger. Yes. <laughs> I can't even imagine it. So today he's going to be te- he's going to be explaining to us how how come like now Uganda shilling is stronger than Kenya shilling. Like I cannot believe it. So, and when you see this guest, what we are going to be talking about is not something that you will just disagree with before you you do what. You check your facts or you think like you double check. Yeah, what is going you you me what I say you can yeah say yeah, that one she's dying. But what he says before he says no, you have to first cross check with your facts. So welcome to my channel. Thank you. This is Julius. I've spent a long time without mm. coming on the channel. It's price, but now I'm back. Okay, so in this show, I want you to tell me. What is co- what caused? Because 
I don't know how Kenya reached here. I, mean, I want you to tell me the reasons why Kenyan shillings, the ones that was strong, that you know, we all knew, even us we would accept as Ugandans that mm, Kenyan currency is strong. Like, what caused its weakness to this point? Uh, maybe before I even explain uh, why it is called the weakest currency right now, mm -hmm. I think I was checking on you on that video you posted. I saw someone comparing the currencies of Kenya, Tanzania, yeah. and Uganda, mm -hmm. and showing Francis. that uh, uh, showing that uh, one dollar is equal to this in Kenyan shillings, yeah. in Uganda shillings, and Tanzanian shillings. Mm -hmm. Let me correct this person. Yes, in the bulkness of money, mm -hmm. Uganda and Tanzanian shillings will be more. Bulkness, I mean like the okay. notes, the, the, uh, if you change hundred dollars in Kenyan shillings, you just get your money, even when put in the much. wallet. No, when it's very little. Mm -hmm. But when you change hundred dollars in Uganda shillings, eh? not Tanzanian shillings, you will have very many notes or bulkness. But You've let understood. me ask you something. If I have 1,000 Kenya shillings here and mm. 1,000 Ugandan shillings, which one has more value? No, that's exactly, that's what I'm trying to explain. That's what? Yeah, that's what that's I'm trying, I'm so trying to explain. So, answer for me that one. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to explain to you. This is 1,000 Uganda shillings. shillings. This is 1,000 Kenya shillings. Which one has more value? No, you cannot equate <laughs> you cannot equate money like that. That's why I'm also trying to help Francis. Yeah, I think Francis has the same thought as he. he exactly, and which is wrong, because bark barkness, you know, is uh, something big. You get it? Like if you change one one thousand one hundred dollars of Kenyan money, you can get a few notes, like maybe three, four, five notes. Mm -hmm. You get it? But if you change one hundred, you dollars in Uganda shillings mm -hmm. you'll get a lot because you see you're getting almost 400,000 that is a lot of money you get it oh my gosh yeah have you understood oh, no ah, me it will take time for me to understand no you need to understand it's very simple oh my gosh eh? the no, just why Francis was being proud was because the if the, their money is, is little, little mm. but it has no value Ours is more, but has value. Mm -hmm. Like, if I have $100, no. our money is, uh, the weakness of a currency is yeah. paged on a dollar. Mm -hmm. You get it? So, $100 of Kenyan shillings, uh, equi equivalent to Kenyan shillings, will be less, but $100 will be more on the Ugandan uh, side. So, Francis was saying that, how comes our money is less more. with a hundred dollars and mm. is more with a hundred dollars on your side? But at the end of the day, mm. it goes back to the purchasing power. Mm -hmm. If we are buying, if both of us are buying an item using US dollars, maybe a hundred dollars, mm. we are going to get the same item. You get mm -hmm. it? But now if we convert to our currencies, me, I will, I, will, I will get the item, the Kenyan person we'll will not. add, will top on the uh -huh. harm of the money. It's good you're using like, that kind yeah. of explanation. We'll top up on the money they have, and yet we change the same current, we change the same amount. Now, we all change the hundred dollars. Yes. Me, I can buy, if I convert, I can buy this phone. Yes. But if a Kenyan converts, he needs to top up to buy the add same no, phone. To add more money to of Kenyan shillings. Same. To buy the same I phone, got you. <laughs> so that's how oh. the currency eh, is looked at. It's not looked at in darkness. Otherwise, even Rwanda would be so proud because they also get less money, mm -hmm. yeah, as yeah. opposed to maybe Tanzania and Uganda, mm -hmm. where when you change, you have a lot of money. But I have a lot of money which has value. For you have less money no with, with less value. It's not that they less, don't have value yeah. with less value. Yeah. You get it. So that's the first uh, starting point where I wanted to first yeah. help yeah. our colleague who commented. Hey. Yes. Hey. So. So how did Kenya reach there? Okay, that's the question we'd be asking ourselves. Mm. Why did Kenya reach here? And how, of course, you see, like, we also still have an issue with, of dollarization. You see, uh, US is a superpower. 
That's why its currency is being used almost all over the world. Hence, our currency is being pegged to it. So, when you have less dollars in your economy, you it means that it's somewhere somehow it's going to affect your transactions. At the end of the day, you need to be selling more outside your country and buying less, so that you can have. Uh, you can have a dollar which is regulated. So at the end of the day, we are of course talking about how did Kenya reach here in relation to the weak currency. Actually, it's not only the Kenyan currency. In Africa, there are three currencies that are not doing well. Mm -hmm. The Kenyan currency, mm -hmm. the, I think the Angolan one, and the Niger, the Nigerian, the Naira. Those three currencies have been the worst, I think, even uh, as of last year. But we're not co only concentrating on Kenya. Kenya, of course, uh, they sh you shouldn't be surprised that your currency is not doing well. Mm -hmm. you've, been ha you've not been having good policies, maybe economically. Probably the people whom you tr trusted and gave jobs are not doing the right thing. We shouldn't also forget that Kenya has also been in an uh, election period where everyone knows what happened, those uh, mandamanos that were taking place uh, had a great impact on their businesses. You get it? Mm. Of course you see like well, as long as you start those demonstrations people will not have trust in your economy. Even those who would be want to be bring businesses to you, because you see the more businesses you have and are selling more out, mm. you're getting more money and you are improving on the strength of your currency. Eh? Mm. There are those demonstrations, which I think affected them severely. Last year. Yes. Then we shouldn't also forget that uh, people seated at the helm of their economy, from the presidency to the ministries, <coughs> I'm sure those guys, there's something they are not doing right. Because we know in Kenya, Kenyans are these most well-educated people whom you would be expecting to be doing things right. But of course, you know, once you involve politics in everything and you look at politics as <coughs> the final product of everything you are doing, mm -hmm. then you are going to do to making mistakes. And I'm sure one of the mistakes that happened were those demonstrations where they refuted the election results. Instead of going back to work, they wasted so much time in court and demonstrating. That was number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, Kenya. Okay, Uganda is by fuel from Kenya, middlemen. Those are the people I won't shy at, I won't shy away by talking about it. The middlemen, the individuals in Kenya, were making more money from the Ugandan economy because they were selling our government fuel. Mm -hmm. At a very high price, they buy it from wherever, from the source, maybe from the Gulf states like uh, Qatar or Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. Once it reaches Kenya, they are selling us, they actually sell us t times two. So finally, our government said no. This has to stop. And as a result of that, we are no longer buying from those middlemen. Mm -hmm. So you realize that our money was going to Kenya in dollars. You get it? And uh, you see even like the arrangement the Kenyan government had with uh, the, their suppliers was they would be paying money every after six months of fuel. They give them surprise of six months, then they pay after six months. So that means that that money was remaining in their economy, but now Maybe it's... they were making losses. No, they were making a lot of profits because they were buying for themselves and also selling Uganda. You know how many cars we have in Uganda? Mm. So also that affected them partially. Then at the end of the day, uh, the, I think also credibility. We should, uh, I, sh I will also talk about it. I don't want to beat around the bush. I'm one person who follows what transpires in Kenya a lot. Mm -hmm. I saw this case where a Rwandan businessman was being conned by the Kenyan person. An investor. An investor. 
and of course all this gives a very bad image outside so it cannot give trust to people who would want to do business in Kenya but I'm also at the same time because I've followed up this case from the time it started up to the time it ended I'm happy that uh, finally the courts of Kenya realize that actually the business the business owner is a Rwandis and they gave him back his business that one may be may bring back the trust of people who are following this case and showing seeing how shed uh, the Kenyan people are because you see when you're registering a company in Kenya they want you to use a Kenyan they don't want you even if you're an outsider a Kenyan mm -hmm. should register for you they don't want unlike in Uganda where even if you're a foreigner you just come and register in your capacity mm -hmm. so now this Kenyan had used that advantage of registering a friend's so business risky. yes of registering a friend's business mm -hmm. let alone telling a friend that it is his business of course it was his business because of the name yeah. But now the Kenyan government, uh, when the courts of law in Kenya, when they were following up this case, they said, yes, you own the name, but mm -hmm. the money is for this person. The owner is this, so we recognize this owner. So in the system, the owner is not surfacing any way how kind of person can register in your name and then take the business? No, that's what I'm saying. That's where the law was. No, that's where the loopholes were. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because they thought that uh, this individual who register the company is actually the owner of the company but they forgot mm -hmm. that there is also what they call ownership mm -hmm. like in Uganda when you are registering a company you need to fill the ownership form so you could be having a company but when it is being owned by other people so the Kenyan courts of law based on that information mm -hmm. gave back the owner money. He, the, his things of course including the money the assets as opposed to this friend he had trusted mm -hmm. who had taken over everything this court this case has been there for like more than eight months and people are following so you see all that puts patches in your businesses so people will not trust you mm -hmm. but i'm so happy that how the case ended because the finally the owner was given back all his things and this one who owns the name mm -hmm. was told to go hang on a tomato tree Mm. Okay, I was also reading about the same thing mm. and I read somewhere that Kenya is having like more imports and that also causes their currency like to... Exactly, yes, because you see once you are importing you are using yeah. the more dollars mm. and yet you are not making more dollars. You are supposed mm. to be importing and exporting mm. almost at the same level mm. to stabilize your currency. So what happened to the exports? No, you see that like I've told you, they've been so much into politics. Uh, okay. And at the end of the day, let's also not uh, shy away from talking about our politicians. Mm. We give them these positions, we trust them to be doing the right thing. When they're in those positions, they are only spending. Mm. Eh? They come, me, I'm a new minister, I need a new car. And yet the minister was previously there only used the car which is there for like two years. These cars you are buying are damn expensive. You need to be having a car maybe for like 10 years. For you are buying a car every after two years. I also saw previous, uh, recently that they wanted to, I think, do some renovation on the state house, on their state house. And the money which I saw. Yeah. Eh? Exaggerated. It is exaggerated. Because they are comparing to the new state house in Tanzania. That money for renovation is more than the money that actually built a new state house, which is even much bigger than what Kenya has. And all this is as a result of uh, giving so much power to the people. I think at the end of the day, us as citizens, we need to get back our power from these politicians. We've given them too much power to even do the wrong things. Because you say, or, or I take an example, I shouldn't use uh, Kenya a lot, however much I think about Kenya, but I know that's what happens. You find because a person is in charge of the procurement, mm. a brick which is being sold at 100, mm -hmm. they say that it's sold at 1,000. Nobody is there to say no. Exactly, that's why I'm saying that we are giving them so much power to do the wrong things. Then once uh, they are going to do such a thing like such a renovation, they are, only, they are using 100, which is the actual price of a brick, 
and the 900 they are withdrawing because it has already been passed that you are buying a car you are doing a renovation all these are affecting people then i think the other thing we shouldn't also run away from is uh doing business in kenya is costly to the lower people to the uh, normal the citizens yeah, the normal citizens. Forget about the middle class and the upper class. Mm. The normal citizens are our people in the villages, the farmers, because now when you see the price of uh, fertilizer, hmm? mm. someone who is supposed to be a farmer, once you uh, uh, buy fertilizer, mm. then you are out of business. Because you are not going to compete with a person who is like buying things from Uganda. Because in Uganda, even the we are lucky that we not use fertilizer maybe in farming. Mm. A few use it. Mm. Even those who use it, it is cheap. But in Kenya it is expensive. So it makes it hard for the locals mm. to do business. And once the locals are not doing business, you shouldn't forget that the locals, the one inches, are the biggest percentage. Mm. If these people are doing business, everyone is involved in business, it will add to the strength of a currency. But if then now they are running out from business, mm. then it is the opposite. Let me give a, a scenario. Like uh, Uganda buys, I think, one million chick, one day chicks per day from Kenya. You get it? Every day mm -hmm. we are buying from them. At some point they wanted to be smart and they were refusing our eggs from entering. Even the milk they stopped? Uh, no, those are a bit political and I don't want to enter political <laughs> things, but I think it was sorted out because it had so much to do with the former president and what. Mm. This chicken thing I'm talking about, mm -hmm. we buy one million chicks from Kenya. Now, they were refusing us from selling them eggs because they are saying that our eggs are very expensive. So they were protecting the ones who are selling eggs in Kenya because you see for them they put in a lot so they're supposed to be selling expensively. So now when the Ugandan, when the Ugandan eggs are on the Kenyan market, people will buy the Ugandan eggs because they are cheaper. Uh, imagine you import, you import something and You it's get it. Cheap. So because Kenya wanted to be smart, I am not saying the, the individuals who are in positions you trusted wanted to be smart by saying okay we are stopping ugandan eggs protect the kenyan market mm. then we also told them we are buying one chicks per day one day chicks per day from you mm -hmm. so we're also going to stop so they realized they were in dilemma mm. of losing our market which is actually i think we are the biggest country that buys those chicks from them then they said okay we can compromise and they left our eggs to keep entering. But of course our eggs are affecting them. So because they are in between a hard rock and a hard press. You don't buy our eggs and yet we are buying chicken from you and these same chicken are ones which are giving us eggs we are selling you. Then we stop. So but you see at the end of the day they were also ended up affecting the local person who is doing chicken business in Kenya. So and it's a very simple thing the Kenyan government mm -hmm. make these farmers comfortable by lowering all the costs let the costs be the same as the costs in Uganda that will be the easiest way out and you know it's possible just use uh, remove those VAT issues you are talking about I hear you're even trying to increase VAT just try to remove most of those taxes make your people comfortable get out of your comfort zone you see the problem with these guys mm. they sit in their asses they have very big houses they have a lot of money because they've stolen a lot so they don't too feel much corruption uh, and uh, too much corruption so they don't feel ah even if the lower person is not uh, mm. doing well me i was yeah. still imposing because you see at the end of the yeah. day the government needs money so they still want to squeeze that Little, uh, that little money they want, that money they want, f as little as possible from each and every individual, mm. which doesn't add up. So, mm. you people get out of your aces, go talk to these people on the ground, see the actual problems they have, 
help them out. If you don't help them out, you'll keep moving with security, you'll keep putting very high walls because these guys, the more they become poor, the more they will come for you. Like in Uganda, always say, uh, the time will come when the people will fail to have what to eat and they will eat the politicians. <laughs> so you are not safe from also your voters. So better do the right thing. Try as much as possible to lower the cost of doing business for individuals. Try as much as possible to have credibility. The credit bit, I mean, I was, uh, I'm bringing it in form of this other individual had business and a local wanted to take it and the government was just watching till the person went to court. And it would have been easy for the government to intervene and say, but you guy, you registered for this person, this business is for this person to also give some kind of confidence to the outsiders who would want to do business with Kenya. Uh, I think last week... Let me also talk about it. Mm. I saw a letter from the Tanzania Aviation Authority mm. which was stopping Kenyan airline from I think the 22nd of this month stopping it completely to doing biz uh, to bringing passengers to and fro Dar es Salaam because the Kenyan government had stopped mm -hmm. the Tanzanian cargo aeroplane from doing business in uh, Nairobi. So you see, we should also not forget that it's a win-win yeah. situation. You get it? These ones give an excuse that we are stopping you because you've stopped us. <laughs> and at the end of the day, even if I'm the one, actually Kenya has always done so, so many things like that with Uganda. And Uganda doesn't care. <laughs> There was an issue last week. We were saying that Ugandans usually they don't they do same things to us, but mm. us we don't care. Yes, uh, we've not been caring so much because uh, you know the, our president always wants to be in good books with everyone. They end up negotiating and negotiating, but for Tanzania it was different. It was mm -hmm. a tit for tat. You don't want our airline to work in Nairobi. Also, don't want you to work in Dar es Salaam, but uh, okay, uh, that uh, not uh, that not with uh, notwithstanding, mm -hmm. I think the Kenyan government is also trying to take steps because I saw Kenya Airways also writing back saying there is an issue, but we're trying to work it out to make sure that there are no interruptions. Of course, you see there are some people who have booked their tickets earlier. Maybe there are even already people for those days when they are threatening to stop. Mm. So my simple question to registrators in Kenya, mm -hmm. or not even Kenya alone, maybe even Tanzania, because I'm not going to blame any of these two. I don't know where the impasse could have come from, but assuming it is coming from Kenya, since you are talking about the Kenyan currency, Assuming it is coming from Kenya, <coughs> why do you always have to wait till that time when people are doing a tit for that game? You see, these are things we used to do when we were young. But now when you are old and you are doing it on government, I don't think it's worth it. You see all that, you know how much money Kenya is will be losing just in case this thing stayed there. All this will be impacting their currency. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, okay, at the end of the day, okay, I'm just uh, saying this as fun, but what? You see, Kenya, uh, at some point, I'm sure, I, you, when you, Uganda, because this is even if you go to Kenya, mm -hmm. most of those first, first people who started, started from Makiri. So there was uh, that time when Uganda ha thought that it is the king in education in East Africa. Mm -hmm. But those days are long gone. Eh? Now people are boosting... Uh, of having studied from University of Nairobi, all sorts of universities, Desta University. I'm talking about the Kenyan issue. Mm. Now no long, people are no longer saying we studied from Makere. So all those days are long gone. Because those days, you know, see Uganda would be boasting as if it's the big boy on the block, doing everything. 
So now Kenya is also trying to behave the same way. Like the same way Americans want to bully everyone all, all over the world because they are a superpower. And I should uh, advise Kenya. The big boy theory doesn't work at all, I can assure you. Saying that because you are the biggest, yes, you are the biggest economy in East Africa, but I can assure you, you have a lot to lose if you don't look into your ways how you are doing things. The big boy, our policy, our theory is so childish. It doesn't work like that because you feel I have people have studied, I have lawyers, then I can uh, move around and organizing people. Because if you are to see uh, Uganda, yes, Uganda is a landlocked country, maybe Rwanda, Congo, we use uh, Mombasa as our port, that is business to you. So you should be handling, you are benefiting from us, we're also benefiting from you. It should be as that, not because you feel you can, but because I saw when the time Uganda had decided to start buying its own fuel, not buying from the middlemen who were cheating it, these people are refusing us from using their pipeline. But the pipeline, we are not going to use it for free. Mm -hmm. eh? You get it? Mm -hmm. They want us to build, uh, I think, like five petrol stations in Kenya for them to allow us to use their pipeline. Why, why do we need petrol stations in Kenya when the fuel is actually destined for Uganda? Those are the things I'm trying to talk about. There's why you do there's why you need to use common sense. Actually, in this case, Kenya needs common sense. The people <laughs> in charge, you need to use common sense. Common you don't sense. you don't need to use what you studied in class mm -hmm. because uh, it's a policy and to use our pipeline should be having this and this. I think that's none of our issues. The petrol stations, you are the one who needs them. We have our own petrol stations. The only thing we need mm. is uh, using a pipeline, which we are going to pay for, mm. having a fuel in our country. So the big boy theory should be stopped. Mm. All this will be affecting you because you mm. see, uh, the other advice I should give Kenya, mm. you shouldn't forget that even Tanzania, is at the cost. We have an alternative. It might be a longer route, but we'd rather use a longer route than being disturbed on this side. That is the same reason that's why Uganda, as a country, went to the East African Court of Justice, mm -hmm. protesting the issue of Kenya refusing us from using their pipeline. Because for them, they are using the policy, the policy which says you're supposed to have A, B, C, D. But at the end of the day, if you apply common sense, you realize that Uganda as a country doesn't, shouldn't be running petrol stations in Kenya. Mm. But why would Uganda go to court, yet they would just use Tanzania? No, you see the whole thing is, we've been doing business with Kenya. This is the same family. Still, we still use Tanzania. Mm. Even there's some fuel, little fuel, I think 90% was passing through Kenya, 10% mm. through Tanzania. So we still use Tanzania. You mm. see? At the end of the day, it's not a game of cats and dogs. We need to be so, working together. So as, as we make this video January 2024, are we mm. still buying fuel from Kenya or no? No, the middleman stopped. We so are now we are getting from Tanzania? No, we are still getting through Kenya as they are trying to work on modernities of mm. sorting out the pipeline issue. But now at least we are getting it cheaper. That's why you realize that our, our fuel has been stable for some time. Because the middleman in Kenya was really messing us up. So we are more sharper than you, fe you think. These days, uh, Uganda <laughs> is ahead. <laughs> then I was watching this guy on TikTok making some like funny, like in sort of comedy, saying that people are exchanging their Kenyan shillings to keep their money in dollars. And then there's a lot of shillings on the market and nobody wants them. Yes, of course, you see, once you don't trust your own currency, you start converting it, which is also risky because at the end of the day, it weakens even the little that was there. Mm. So do you think the weakening of the Kenya shillings strengthens the Ugandan shillings? No, it doesn't. They are not even rated at all. Uh. Because you see, let me also tell these Kenyans, mm -hmm. brothers and sisters of ours, mm. um, I actually might be more Kenyan than you people. Mm. I have families there, I'm always there. 
I know what is happening in Uganda and Kenya because I have interest in Kenya. Mm. Let me give a scenario. Like these people are staying on Busia border. These guys, okay, they, are, they have that common market on the Ugandan side. I think also on the Kenyan side. I'm not sure. These guys prefer coming and selling their things and getting the Ugandan shillings because they've realized that they, they've lost trust in their own shilling, in their own sh money. They would rather first sell in Uganda shillings, then take the Uganda shillings and go look for Kenyan money because they'll be making more. Uh, on top of that, like I said, of course, I'm interested in the region. I know what has been transpiring. Let me also tell you this thing. Because you see, there are people who are already saying, why is it that uh, there are also demonstrations in Uganda? Why are is it not being affected the same way when uh, Kenyan demonstrations happen and it is affecting their business? There are two scenarios here. According to my observation, I've not read it here, that's my observation. Mm. Kenyans, they have good public relations, where even the government employs so many people, and even their own individuals, try to fight as much as possible for, the, for their country. To say Kenya, there's this, we're doing good, we're doing this, A, B, C, D. Mm. On the other side, Ugandans, every individual wants to talk only the negativity. Even the government, the politicians, the opposition, they are always talking about bad, 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 bad. bad. But Kenya, good, good, even when bad. Yes, <laughs> but the reality on the ground, I can assure you, the negative publicity in Uganda mm -hmm. is actually not true. Because things are the opposite. Mm. Things are moving on smoothly. Even when you see these things on TikTok, on social media, mm. Uganda is doing very well. Because at some point, we as citizens realize that we needed to do our own things. So in short, citizens are doing their own things. Government is doing the opposite. But at the end of the day, what is on the ground is good. Is even encouraging. Though we don't have people to sell uh, the U Uganda as a country to encourage people. So people find out themselves that actually things are good. They start coming. Mm. On the Kenyan side, you have good B PR, even your citizens talk about good in Kenya, but what is on ground is not really what you're talking about. Mm. Eh? Mm. Eh? So now, mm. my wish would be mm -hmm. what is on the ground, uh, the, the positives you're talking about on the ground, work on the positives, let them be realized as positives, so that even if you told someone that there is A when a person comes should be finding A. Mm -hmm. Other than saying there is A and the A is not there. Like I've to given you some bit of briefs. Okay, with, okay th this is common knowledge. It's on internet. The impasse between Uganda and uh, Uganda, b between Uganda and Kenya because of the oil. That one now the airline with Tanzania. The credibility in relation to business where people were taking over people's business because they just trusted them and used their names and the government is keeping quiet. All those are negatives that need to be cleaned up. The government should look at the person who is down, the local citizen. They should lower the cost of doing business in Kenya to help each and every one. Because you see, this prosperity for all we are talking about, as long as it remains in the hands of a few individuals, even these few individuals will not sleep. Eh? You still will have the money, you need a gun, you need dogs, you need a high wall, you need security to move with, because you're having money, protecting yourself against these few whom you've been uh, taking the money through taxpayers money which they are paying that would be actually helping them lower business so get back to your senses help every kenyan because the kenyan country belongs to everyone not to a few individuals like the same way yeah. would be looking at it on the ugandan side uganda is for us all mm -hmm. that's why you see everyone should ever everyone qualifies to become a leader be it president or anything even if you're from the 
deepest village in Kisi or in Kisumu or all over. So let's have economics that works for everyone. Now, uh, as I conclude, I'm now is talking. There, before you conclude, is there any hope of recovery? Like yes, the hope okay. is there. The the hope is there. Mm-hmm. The hope is just using common sense, like I've said. <laughs> I'll not run out from it. It's common sense that needs to so be they used. Their own problem. Yes, we are now talking about. Uh, okay, in conclusion, I think let me also talk about the economic policies from a layman's point of view where like people need to understand you see we are employing these economists in these offices these people some of them have come direct from universities they only look at graphs a graph is like this the economy is doing well a graph is like this the economy is not doing well Mm -hmm. but these same graphs you are looking at in your offices Mm. the other citizens down cannot understand those graphs And you're even drawing those graphs from your offices. Mm -hmm. Go on ground, draw the right graphs. What I mean, the reality on ground Mm -hmm. is not the actual graphs you're drawing. You're drawing those graphs to impress World Bank, showing that something is being done. But my dear, Mm -hmm. as long as those graphs are not tandem, with what is on the ground, mm. you always have issues. It's like you're lying to yourself. You're lying to yourself. Try as much as possible to go on the ground, know what is happening. Me, I've uh, had some few projects I've done in Kenya, especially in the villages. People are not doing well. And it's because the government doesn't want to go down on the ground and see exactly what is happening. If I'm talking on behalf of the farmers, these farmers should be getting free fertilizer from the government because you can afford. Reduce on uh, extravagance of buying high-end cars, bil- having uh, unnecessary buildings, those uh, over-costed procurement processes. Use that same money to buy fertilizer for the farmer down for free for free these people who are doing farming at sl- at small scale i'm talking about people the one inch who are doing farming at small scale i'm not talking about Survival. these ones uh, i'm not talking about these ones who have uh, large farms because even those who have large farms the fertilizer they apply there is just being bought by the money they stole from government eh? you get it you want to conclude uh, uh, you see, these large f- people with large farms are even buying this fertilizer at a loss. Okay, even if they sold and make losses, they don't mind mm. because they are ac- they have access to free money. Oh, yeah. uh, you get it. Yeah, but the person down in the village doesn't have that access. Yeah. So as you try to steal the man, the little money you are actually collecting from these people, mm. try as much, uh, try as much as possible to give them back, mm. give them free fertilizers. They are they will compete, mm. but as long as they are still buying the fertilizer, and you still want to regulate the pricing, and uh, you still want to allow the farming products from Uganda and Tanzania because as we are not investing a lot then these people will not compete and as long as they will not they are not competing you sh- should remember that the more you buy things from out is also affecting your currency that's the importation versus exportation you're supposed to be exporting more and importing less yes. Uh, so now talking as an East African mm-hmm. we need each other mm-hmm. there are some impasses that shouldn't be going in the media these are things that should these are things that should have uh, done what these are things that we need to sit down on round tables in our boardrooms 
and sort of mine is trying to show who is powerful and who is not. Mm. Eh? You know, even if it, because like, uh, I'm sure most of these cases in Kenya, mm. we are being won because Kenyans have studied. That is a factor that cannot be overwritten. You have lawyers who are looking at money, but there is something beyond money. Because you will use the courts of law to win me, cheat me, I will go get a service somewhere, but you will have lost a, cost, a customer for good. You have lost a relationship for good. Mm. Yeah, you get it. Of course, I cannot also run away from the Rwanda-Uganda saga. Hmm? That thing was very unfortunate. Mm. Uganda lost a lot because at the end of the day, it made the Rwandans harder. Yeah? They looked for alternatives. So even when the border has been opened, mm. We lost that market for right. good, maybe, uh, and they're still not trusting whether it will be closed again or not. So they're still working with the new people they got mm. when the border was closed. So I'm not the one person who wants to know who is more powerful than the other. Mm. And at the end of the day, we shall never be the same. Uh, like I always see people and they think about the capitals, talking about CG, Nairobi is more built than Kampala, Kampala is more built than Gigali, all those things. They to always remain like that. Because why would we have a Nairobi in Kampala? When even our population is not that big to use those facilities. Eh? So that's why Nairobi will always be big with those facilities because the people are there. You cannot have the same facilities of Kampala or Nairobi in Rwanda. Yeah? Rwanda is, a, is almost a population of like 11 to 13 million. Yeah? So who is going to occupy them? Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, whatever everyone has is what they what should they be need. have, is what they need. Because mm -hmm. yeah? you see when like the elite I know about Kampala, you see most of those high raised buildings, most of the upper floors are empty. People are not occupying them, but of course you say that that's the now that affects the landlord who built that building and is not getting back their money. So, if we need high uh, buildings, we have daily buses from Kampala to Nairobi. I will come there to see those high buildings stay in them. <laughs> if you need night fun, the people in Nairobi, buses are there even if you cannot afford planes. You come and have that fun in Uganda. If you need quietness, buses, are there daily buses from Nairobi to Chingali? You can go there and have that quiet life. Mm. So oh, oh, we need each other in such a way because we we may, oh, we fulfill each other in one way or the other by the fact that you cannot we are have. Different. We are different. Exactly, that's what I, I was looking at uh, for. Mm. We complement each other. So mm. our politicians all over East Africa. Try to sit down, put in place the right policies. Let us not have this East African community as a white elephant. Because you see, we need the reality out of it. And in any case, most of these people in East Africa, by the way, are interrelated. You cannot run now, it's only like the borders which cause trouble. But minus these borders, we are relatives Sudan, Congo, everywhere. We are relatives to each other. So there's n we don't need any more time to compete. We just need time to build ourselves and move as a group. I thank you. What can I add? Because myself, I really had so many questions before we started this video. But right now that we are coming to the end, I, all my questions have been answered. Sir Francis, you who commented, showing us one dollar equals this, Uganda one dollar equals, I hope we have, uh, we have answered you also. If you're interested in this kind of content, please kindly subscribe to this YouTube channel and give this video a thumbs up. Otherwise, we thank you so much for watching and a happy 2020 for bye.